season two. Of course, my name is Dead Medics, and we are back. We are ready to go. We are here. Uh, so as always, joining me on the desk, let's, let's start off top to bottom. We've got Klopp, Mr. Aquaman himself. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I shaved my head just for Skirky today, so I hope you enjoy <laughs> Skirk. Yeah, and hopefully you upgraded the con shell, guys. If that's still an issue, let us know. <laughs> we were having some issues. That's why we, we, we started a little late for a number of reasons. We, we were having some issues last time we know, so if that's still happening. Of course, this is live, everybody, so what's going on? This is me currently in, this, in the same moment. It's 6.21 p.m. Eastern, so we are live, so let us know if we have any more of those problems. But uh, moving on, we've got LSM, Mr. Ed Editor Man. How you doing, brother? And how's it going? It's going all right, going all right indeed. I just like I like being the only uh, angel of the three Batmen in their caves here. Like Max is about a good mid tier light level, but you and Klopp are just like, no, 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 lights. What are, what are those? Who needs light? Who needs to <laughs> see my lights. face? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, the man who was late for like 37 minutes. I'm going to have to get on you, Max. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic. Shave my face. Hopefully, Twitch chat won't hate me, hate me anymore. Shave your face. <laughs> and like me, dude, you lost 10 years of your life. You just look so much younger, so much more vibrant. I like it. <laughs> Well, guys, what is going on? We are back. RLPC Redirect Episode 2. Uh, it might be a little bit of a short episode. I don't actually know yet. We got, we got some stuff to talk about, uh, but this is a much more dynamic cast. If you guys tuned into the live episodes last season, uh, you guys asked questions in chat a lot of time, and we answered them. We, we'll talk about them on here, and particularly today, because we, we tracked some stats for preseason, but not like wins, losses, so we didn't go through and, and do those today, so we probably won't talk about, like, Unless it's really surprising, some of the losses that we did see and that we'll talk about next episode once rosters are finalized. Remember, guys, friendly reminder, as I've said before, rosters have to be done by Friday. Have to have it down to four and under cap or you forfeit the first game according to danger. He asked me to make that announcement. Also, another announcement, since this is, of course, our maintenance little segment here in the beginning. Uh, I had the media team uh, town hall yesterday. Uh, I only had about, I think, like nine people roll on through. That's fine. They don't have to be big. Uh, I know I, I hadn't announced that very well, so I want to go ahead and announce it now. It's going to be about every two weeks. Uh, that is for anybody in the community, for any questions or concerns that you have. Uh, the big one was a lot of people asking about stream, particularly if, and I'll go ahead and answer this too, because I think it's important. Um, the, the big question was, okay, let's say I'm on stream at eight o'clock. Now, uh, because the, remember the regular season is going to be eight, nine and 10, but I want to do nine o'clock. My team can't do eight. I want to stay on stream. I want to go to nine. Uh, is there any way that we can work that time out? If you get it to me in the, in the required deadline of three, three days before and say, Hey, can we try to swap with the nine teams? I can try to help facilitate that and talk to the nine teams, see if they can take your eight o'clock slot, that kind of thing. I'm not going to kick you off the stream if you can't make that specific time, but you could make one of the others, unless the other times can't of course reschedule, in which case I will have to remove you. I just, that's fair to them because that was their time. So it's not a hard thing. I'm pretty flex flexible with a lot of this. So that was a big question that I think a lot of people were asking that wanted to know. So now you know. Uh, other than other news, I mean, with the podcast, I think next week's episode is once again going to be pre-recorded. I think we're planning on recording that either sometime like early next week or, or late this week. Um, you know, because preseason, there's not a whole lot of news, really, like a whole lot of new news because, you know, whatever. Um, but definitely we'll get you another one here soon. So. All that coming through, I think that about covers it for maintenance. Of course, I don't want to, to leave out. Of course, once again, you got Magic Mike, beautiful streamer man. He is in a background stream of us today working on a producer. You saw him in chat there a little while. So once again, thank you to him for coming through and hosting this. But guys, we're going to dive right into it. And we're going to start, you know, we had different segments for the day. I think the easiest one is we wanted to talk about some of the trades because there was a lot of trading actually going on in the first week of preseason. A lot more than I would even say last season or any season I've really been a part of RPC. I mean... And not just, you know, little rinky-dink trades of players you don't really know and who did okay, and you're just like, oh, right, whatever. Like, big, like, uh, high-value names, names that we talked about in the last episode, actually, uh, that were supposed to be these team decider players that are end up getting traded two, three, four times between teams for these little picks, particularly uh, in single-A. Obviously, Indy and Mav have had their own issues with finding player ability, so they're, like, not trading too much. There is some some indie trades and, and free agents that have come up on the block. But I want to start, guys. We we talked about a few of them, and I'll just open this up and start. I think the very first one that we wanted to talk about was Irony. Uh, I actually spoke with him about this trade, too. He goes to the Herons, off the Warriors. Uh, him and Cracked both leave, I believe, the Warriors roster at this, about the same time. And, you know, I talked to him about it because uh, I thought it was I, – I even went in chat. I said uh, it was an oopsie trade, it, according to me, because I was like, you know, I'd heard from others that he was doing really good for that roster. He was their big carry. Uh, he was the, you know, the one that really was going to put forth that, that Warriors team to the next level. And then he gets traded. I'm like, ooh, oopsie trade. And then I had uh, that team captain for the Warriors, Sosa, hop into my DMs like a little freakazoid. And he's like, he's like, you worry about your team and I worry about mine. 
And I'm like, I worry about all teams. That's my job. What do you mean? <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> you do you, double A player, whatever. But either way, I, I, I didn't like this trade I, for the Warriors. The Warriors like blew up for no reason. I, they looked really good. And now they don't, at least to me. I want to know you guys take on this, the irony trade. We'll get to the cracked one in a minute. But I'm like, what happened here? Like, what happened to that team? I don't know. Um, irony is, uh, from playing with him last season, he can be a, a difficult player to play with sometimes. Um, he's a very offensive-minded player. So if you get that figured out early, it's fine. But if it's not meshing well, I can understand why it wasn't gelling or whatever. I do think he was the best player on that roster. Um, I don't know that Sins is going to be the guy that comes in and fixes all their issues. Uh, but I don't know. We'll have to find out. <laughs> hey, what's your take on it, LSM? I want to know, you know, what do you think of this, this double-A trade? Yeah, so ta- talking with um, Irony... From what I've been told, the reason these trades happened was because of a little bit of a uh, egoing. So I've heard, I've heard that Prisma and both Gaiko kind of got a little antsy, and a game or a scrim or something like that made cracked mad. So that's why he wanted to go, and then they just ended up getting rid of Irony also. So I think it's a horrible trade because the two of them, or I don't think Gaiko or Prisma are all that good and they were really held together by irony being able to carry them on both sides of the field so mm-hmm. we'll have to see max what do you think i mean i know you know irony obviously we've we've all been a part of the bobcats or except for lsm here so you know what do you, what do you think uh yeah i think it's a terrible trade bad move <laughs> bad move you, you 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 just went from guaranteed playoffs to maybe eight and ten that's just my opinion though could be wrong yeah i mean we'll have to see right at the end of the day does does the trade matter do they know what they're doing uh, I agree. I don't like it. But, you know, the flip side of the trades is always, you know, we talk about, oh, what about the losses for the team that traded this individual? Are they better? But what about the team that picked him up, the Herons? Right now, their roster consists of Irony, Swervy, uh, Michael Burt, P, and Crazy Steve. Not as prolific as a, as a, the Warriors roster was before they, they imploded, obviously. Uh, but what do you guys think? Do you think this will be a good double-A roster? Or do you think maybe this is not going to go so hot and unfortunately will diminish Irony's potential a little bit going to a team like the Herons? I think that'll still be a good team. Um, I know Michael Burt P was really good last year. I think the Mustangs grabbed him off waivers or off wait list. Um, mm-hmm. And then he was really good for them. So I think it'll still be a good team. I think whatever team Irony goes to in double A is going to be a good team. Mm-hmm. I th- I think that they'll be solid. Uh, they I think they're going to be a bubble team. They could make playoffs. They could not. Um, but for what they gave up to get irony they gave up a fourth round pick like they're they didn't really risk all that much going to get him so i think it's a win regardless of how their season turns out Mm -hmm. well you know i think now now they at least the very least and more enter into the equation i think they have more of a shot at least in my my mind of even making playoffs this heron's team because before again i didn't really know any of the players it was interesting the way they had built it they still have a lot of cap but I think that picking up Irony was really smart for them, particularly for as low as he went. I think he said he went for like a round four or something, which is like, you know, I don't know about that. Because I remember, you know, uh, last season, he subbed up for AAA in the Bobcats for us uh, several times. He was really good. He he, he fill in really well. He, he can definitely play at that upper level. So, you know, good best of luck to him and moving into the Herons. And we'll see how they do. Warriors, I'm not sure about that one. But moving back to the right, same thing, the crack trade. As you said, you know, LSM, that he probably, you know, he had some issues with some of the ego and things like that on the roster. But now he goes to the Vultures, and then he goes to the Bandits. And I remember him getting actually picked up by the Bandits. I was talking to somebody as it happened. They didn't realize. Uh, what do you think? Is this good for the Bandits team? Is this good for Cracked? Or why do you think he's getting traded around so much? Uh, I don't think it's a uh, an entirely good trade for the Bandits because I think they're... At some, if I remember correctly, the bandits ended up getting rid of Sins, mm-hmm. and playing against Sins, Sins was actually a pretty decent player, mm-hmm. and I I don't think Crack's gonna be able to fix, fill that spot on that roster. Mm-hmm. And looking at this roster, honestly, I don't I don't think it'll be good. I think this roster will implode on itself. 
uh, most of these players, other than I think Jalen, I they're not all that much. So I, I think that it was really bad for the Bandits to make the trade they did. Hmm. And they yeah, also I mean, have six players on their team, right? Yeah, now. yeah. yeah. And I have been talking to uh, Chase. He's talking. He said the captains have got to give him those lists to cut down the teams. Even we saw five. I have to choose one to cut down here. Unfortunately, is the way it goes. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, you talk about the, these, these trades and things. Uh, that I know that the way a lot of the Pirates org is currently being built is sort of just on an MMR basis. In addition to uh, word of the captains, right? So who do you think is better? Who do you like? Who fits in the cap? So, you know, we'll see how they decide they want to sort of end. Uh, Cause I know that that are uh, all, most of the, that org's rosters are still in flux. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that comes through. But I do think, I think you bring up an interesting point of, I guess the, the question then you would still come back to though, is why does he go to the vultures who then go ahead and trade him for the bandits? Did the vultures just not want him? Did they, did they get a better offer? You know, I mean, I'm not as familiar with the trade. So, so really why would you get rid of him and give him to the bandits for, whatever the vultures received if you take him from the warriors just straight off did the vultures give up a pick or something like what was the actual trait vultures uh that, good question okay give me one second here Let's see oh yeah, yeah i'll piece yeah. on the hunt, digs. On the hunt. Where, where is this at we have so many trades going on guys that we still got to talk about so that's why you can't half see any of these but, they received uh, a round yeah, five pick. Yeah, well, mm, from I, the bandits. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then vultures gave up a round four pick to get him. So they just basically gave away a round four and picked up a round five. Yes, yeah, trading him twice. Why? Why I, would I you do know. that? That's that's the thing. Is like, why take him and oh, then just like you know, oh. hey, I don't want him. I'll trade okay. him into Walmart. Personally, looking at this, like. I'm going to be honest, the Hawks org is kind of screwed. I don't think either, like, I, I think Entity can potentially run a good org, but I don't think he's doing it so far with that trade being a great definition of what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, like, most of the newer GMs have a good AGM to help them, and I don't think Hakuna is helping at all. So I think this org just... Trades like that, I'm not surprised to see, honestly. And I mean, Hakuna Mobamba or Mobamba is never isn't said that. Reliable? I will never <laughs> say that. No. You mean he's it, not he reliable? Went, okay, okay. The most reliable thing he's done this season is he went non playing, hopefully helping out his double A roster. Pretty sure you said that at the beginning <laughs> of the season, too. You said that the first episode. You like no, that roster? Because at that, point he was, at that point, he was still playing, but then he went non playing. <laughs> a goat of a move for his team. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's that that roster is actually interesting because I I had a lot of hope for it. You remember during the draft, entities seem to be out there trying to get trying to get picks. But you know, whatever they're doing, we'll have to we'll have to see. And I guess good luck to the uh, bandits and the crack if he stays on that roster. You know, still they do have to trim it down. So let's see if he even can remain on a six man roster and gets trimmed to four. But uh, before we go to the next trade, I did see you in in chat chase on uh, the. Stream time is not going to go back to Tuesday, Thursday. That's just not going to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen for a lot of reasons, many of which I could have explained to you. I, I could explain it in the next town hall. I'm not going to get into it now. It's definitely not going to happen. It's going to stay Wednesday, Friday. Uh, it's better for almost all of my casters. It's better for most of the community. Uh, and it's better for our stream viewership, all of it. So it's just not just not even in the cards. Now, 8, 9, and 10, it is going to go back to. That was something we decided in the media team meeting yesterday, in addition to talking with some of my casters. They much preferred the later time because it, they can get off work and they can get some dinner and then they can get to the game, much like the players. So that's currently what we're looking at, the 8, 9, and 10, as it is already slotted, and it's definitely going to stay Wednesday, Friday. So unfortunately, sorry for that. We might get to your stallion's question in a minute. That said, to the next trade. Uh, so you do have replays. Now, this was interesting because I remember, I can't remember exactly who it was i want to say it was max but it could have been klopp who's like replays this guy is going to define the team that uh, he was on back then i forget who exactly had him uh then he just starts getting traded around he he ends up on the admirals um you know he he, he moved to the lions org for a little while but he's currently on the admirals so you know what do you guys think I, I remember us being pretty hype on him he looked pretty good but now he got traded all around uh do you have any inklings of why or do you think he's gonna a good fit for this admirals roster because i remember they wanted him I remember could be in the draft or somewhere right after they were trying to angle for him. No, they were trying to trade for him. They offered some terrible terms. 
but he ends up going to them anyways because nobody else wanted him. So what do you guys think happened here? I personally have no idea. Um, it's not really up my alley. That'd be more up Max's alley. But uh, I don't know too much about it, but if I, I had to guess, just in the way it went down, um, someone didn't like someone, and then just like egos got in the way, and then someone got traded. That's probably what went down here. Hmm. I see, and you have. I see you guys in chat. Kenga saying that he just wanted to go to the Admirals. He just he wasn't going to take any other team, and so that's why he ends up going to the Admirals. And that previously cracked. Uh, Revy says that he was going to not be a starter on the Vultures, which okay. And so then he gets traded because he's maybe going to be a starter on the Bandits. I guess I, I don't I don't know. So those are I guess some of the answers that we are looking for again, guys. If you guys know the answers to some of the questions we're asking. We don't know everything, so just let us know in chat. I am looking at you guys. That's why I look over here. Once again, I got the TV and the and the second laptop up with you guys on it. So until I get the two monitors, so here we are. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. But does he fit on this Admirals roster? Currently has five members, so we'll have to cut down. It's replays, Jaminax, Luco, Hydroxide, and Vulcan. I think this looks like a pretty decent roster, actually. Um, and it'd be I'd be curious to see who you cut. I would imagine if you can afford it, you get rid of Vulcan only because he's the lowest. Though I think that replays and Jaminax are really the only two that are like solidified on this roster. Vulcan's not getting cut from that roster. Um, I'm pretty sure Legend was a really big fan of Vulcan, and then Vulcan dropped like eight goals in a game in the draft East circuit. So I really <laughs> don't think Vulcan's getting cut. So who would you cut? Luco, Hydroxide, Jaminax replays himself. What would you do here with this if you were the Jaminax Admirals roster? Um. Either Luco or Hydroxide, I think. I mean, I think Replays, Jaminax, and Vulcan are your three that you're keeping, and one of those two are going to go. Hmm. They have a lot of flexibility in the cap, too, so they can do whatever they want. Yeah. And who knows? It might be both of them. They pick up someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this, you know, I still actually, uh, I've been talking, my GM still sends me guys. He's like, hey, what about this guy from Free Agency? You want to take a look at him and this and that and the other? So there's still time, guys. If you are free agents or your waitlist, you're still looking to get in the league. Uh, for some teams to pick you up, if you're waitlist, we can't. Unfortunately, I actually already went through that. Uh, there was a, I'll just give my secret away because it doesn't matter. There was a fantastic player uh, by the name of Azaptos that I wanted to pick up for the major team. He's a top 100 North American player, but he came in a little too late. He was uh, waitlist, and you can't pick him up to next season. So maybe secure him for the next season. We'll have to see. Um, that said, so so yeah, you know it's interesting, especially when you talk about someone with as much talent as we as we thought he'd bring to to a team to get traded seventeen times. But I do think he's an incredible acquisition to this Admirals team. I think this team now moves to me to definitely playoff worthy, unless like internal team drama somehow happens, which I don't imagine, especially if Replace wants to go there, uh, would happen. But if it does, that's that's a you know question we'll get to, we'll actually probably ask ourselves later in the season if it happens, but. I definitely think this looks like a playoff team, at least in the current moment. Uh, we we will get to guys remark a little bit more on like final rosters next week because rosters will be final <laughs> by the time we do our next episode. So a little bit more we can talk about. You know, right now we're still sort of speculating who's going to get dropped, who's not, and we don't have the preseason stats once again on the wins losses. We might go through and look for those, but for now, don't have them. So you know, just going, we're just going to keep rocking with a few of these trades here. This is probably the most interesting thing that's happened so far since the last episode. So the next one was served to the embers. For a round one, two, and four, according to you, Klopp, as I was looking through to make sure. Yep. And you and you know, with the, with the rumor being that Oibu wants him to sub up to his major team, what do we think about this trade? And what do we think? I because I if I remember correctly, was he not in Drafty Circuit? I want to say he was. Yeah, like he did okay in Drafty Circuit. He looked pretty good. But what do you think about this? This this acquisition for such a high amount of draft picks, and also the rumors percolating that he might want to move to the major team, or like you know, at least sub up for the major team. I know uh, Koala, another teammate on the Embers, is really good friends with Server. At least they play together a lot. So I think that was a big th thing. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know about Major. Um, I don't know about all that. I don't think Serv is, was the best player in the field during the draft East circuit. I don't think Serv is even the best player on his team. So um, I think that's just talk. That's just my personal thing, though. But I'm not surprised at all to see Serv go to the Embers. Hmm. He actually, he fits the roster quite well. Of course, as you said, Koala's on that roster with Fort, Epic Eagle, and Serve. Uh, they've been doing okay in the preseason, actually. Um, so he does fit it very well with their cap space. They now have 43 cap space remaining, so they're good to go, ready to go for the season. I remember, Klopp, you saying Fort is bad, so there is that. Fort is bad. 
He's terrible. But uh, still doing all right. I mean, you know, I it's uh, it's an interesting acquisition, particularly for so much. I would agree with you. Uh, definitely don't think Major is really what I would be looking at here, particularly since he's not AAA, right? Like that would be like most I would see him is going maybe up to his AAA. And he's the bottom of uh, this Embers team in terms of MMR. So I'm sitting there like, I don't know where that that really comes from. Um, also, because the Flames, they're not an incredible major team. Uh, we played them in the crack tourney. So, well, we played a variation of them. Uh, they couldn't feel their full roster at the time. And even when they did, um, John Waite, I believe, is on that team. He's a very, very good player. But he is definitely not. He might take them right under playoffs or right at playoffs, but he wouldn't take them through playoffs. Uh, there's too much bottom weight on that team from what we played at least in my mind so decent team i i still don't even think he gets to sub up for replacing any of those players so i have to see on that i mean any thoughts from you club or ulsm before we move to the next one on that i i don't think serve in particular is gonna be able to hang at a major level it's a big big leap from single a up to major and even single a to triple a it's a big jump but it's doable for a top tier a player you just as long as you get used to the speed and the consistency but major is a different game mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, I don't think he, he it looks and i'm not trying to say anything but from the looks of it he only got up to like 1387 by himself he hasn't been any higher than that until that was five days ago mm -hmm. Where he went up 200 MMR in the span of two days. So, mm -hmm. one, he's either grinding or where my head goes first, he played with a way better player. Because he instantly lost it. So, major, no. Double A, maybe. I don't even think triple A. From what I've seen. Koala <laughs> seems to be better than him, honestly. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... Again, like I said, I... I you know, I said we would talk about this. We'll probably we might get to this in a minute or, or so. But I, I am never, and I've, I've made this point many times, never been a fan of. I went from indie to AAA, and I should be the best AAA player, or I should sub up, or any of that. Uh, I just don't think it gives you enough time in one season to make that jump to understand that the difference between indie and you know AAA or major, or whatever, is not always mechanical. Yes, in some ways it is, but. Uh, it's also teamwork, how consistent you are. And that seems to be the big one, consistency. And actually, when we, uh, I know the next segment, just a little spoiler is going to be, we're going to talk about some of the stream games and our expectations and then what we actually saw and then what we expect coming up. But uh, the, one of the biggest issues with teams that I have seen on stream, whether they win or lost, has been consistency. The amount of whiffs, the amount of just little tissue touches on the ball. Um, you can all attribute that to finding your teammates' nerves, that kind of thing. But but that's the difference, and I think you saw that most exemplified by the Sharks v Panthers series, right? Where you had two AAA players come in, clearly couldn't keep up, and Panthers dumpster them. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But so I, I definitely, you know, I, I agree with you. I don't think he's he's major. If that was even an inclination, it's probably it could not be, right? It just was some rumors, and we like to talk about rumors here because it's always fun. Once again, I see you in chat. What is up going on, Bard? How's it going, brother? Uh, yes, this is live. We are live. We we see you in chat. Um. So, so yeah, they, yeah, looking at Spacey and Surge. Well, Spacey is actually really interesting and doing, doing phenomenal for the Owls. So sometimes it happens. Not always, but sometimes. Uh, that said, we'll go to the next one. And, and really the, the next one we had, and we can talk about any others if you guys wanted to, but the, really the last one I had for you guys was River Risks. Now, he once again was a player that we were pretty high on when we talked about him. I think it was uh, last week now, or, or yeah, last week. Um, I tried to block out that episode. God, we had so many issues. But uh, he goes to uh, he goes from the Grizzlies, and you know now he's on on the the Lions org. I forget the exact team, but I I think he's a phenomenal player, and I'm curious as to why the Grizzlies get rid of him. What do you guys think? I mean, it's for a seventh, so that's got to be something like just get out of my face kind of deal. <laughs> uh, that's that's like all I can think. Like. I wouldn't even trade a player for a seventh. Like, I'd rather not type up the trade. I'd rather just cut someone. So I I imagine it's just some type of toxicity, probably on both ends. Both people are in the wrong. Two people just got upset at each other, and it just went down like that. That's the only thing I can see. Mar, yeah. Mar also has a tendency just to make trades. I just, I'm sometimes baffled by them. 
I, I okay. don't know his reasoning, but I don't really talk to Mar all that much. I don't keep up with his orgs really, but I, I look through the trades and I'm just confused. But I mean, he got Rivers for that's a any chat pick, with Mar so. in it ever. Right. Just look at it and confused. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah. You know, he's I just don't understand. He okay, so I, I love Mar. He's a, he's a, he's a good guy. I know he's been on vacation, but he has been interesting. His entire org, because obviously they had all the drama with Indian Major or Indian Maverick, where they had like no players coming into to week one of the preseason at all. Um, and of course, we we implement the rule that uh, many people seem to want to complain about of you need to show up or you get the forfeit. And they were like, "Well, I don't have anybody to play, so can I get exempted?" And I'm sitting there like, "Okay, I mean, you get people to play." Now I understand that Maverick and Indy were just nobody existed for them to, to pick up, right? Everybody that, that did exist was either on a team or on a team that had like six people and were just, you know, holding a bag, make sure they could make, fill their roster out. So I totally understand that. I just mean that, you know, you, at some point you did want to have some, some stuff going on before the season started, <laughs> before you got to the one day before I had to play yeah. needed, needed five players, you know, whatever. So that, but it is, it's interesting, but I think he, him and Mike, to their credit, have been making once again some phenomenal moves, some some roster moves here in the season. Some of these trades for players that I'm like, these are like org or series or or even team defining individuals, and they're just like, yeah, no problem, I got them. I think Happy ends up going to one of their rosters. Uh, a lot of people know Happy, and then other people want him on the teams, and we're a little upset. I, obviously, as we're talking about here, River Risks does go, I believe, to the Scorpions. So, you know, a lot of a lot of trades that they're making that are good. Uh, so it's actually interesting to see how this is all working out. But those are pretty much how, what I had for you guys for the for the trades. Any others that you guys wanted to talk about or bring up that I that I missed, or do you guys want to move on to the next bit? I think you covered most of them. Yeah, all the really big ones. The only other one that I would even uh, mention was Rico going mm -hmm. to uh, Inferno. Uh, I've heard very good things about him. We played Inferno in the Crack Tourney uh the other night although i didn't see him uh i've heard very good things about him from trots but everybody knows trots and how he speaks about other people so he mm -hmm. he hypes him up so i'm excited to see him in the regular season yeah i mean it's uh you know I, again i don't know the player individually but i i've spoken to trots some he, he seems like he knows what he's doing so Interesting trade. I mean, good for them, obviously. And so, so it is encouraging to see, right, that people are making the trades that they need to, to make their rosters better. Uh, like I said, sometimes you would get trades that you're just like, what's going on? As we talked about at the top of the broadcast, right, the vultures just trading around four pick for around five and less points, you know, that kind of thing. But sometimes it seems this season uh, the GMs know what they're doing. Particularly, I'm glad to see the uh, Embers whole organization or the Inferno or the the heat as many know them or the or the flames i'm glad to see the organization looking up uh you know no disrespect to weibu but that organization has always been known as the place where troublemakers go to die and that's just where they go and hang out and then they haven't done great with a lot of their teams and they do seem like they're trending in a better direction particularly picking up players that that make them look a little better uh in their respective leagues so i'm happy to see that and i'm happy for them uh because i think that that whole org is sort of an interesting sort of storyline if you want to go about it. But that said, guys, we will go ahead and move to the next one. Then unless LSM, Max, you guys have any anything you wanted to talk about in terms of any of these trades? Not really. All right. So we'll go to the next bit, which is just uh, talking about the preseason you know, stream schedule and the stream matches. Uh, before we do this, though, I see you guys in chat once again. I'm looking over here as much as I can. You'll, you'll hear me, unfortunately, get a little far from my mic. But if you guys have any questions uh, after this segment, I'd like to go through you guys' questions, uh, you know, community questions. It's, as I said, I, we always love to do that and answer you guys. Maybe we'll talk about it for a long time. Maybe it's a short answer, right? Uh, so if you guys want to try to throw those in chat or, or uh, that kind of thing, I'll look at them. Mike will be looking at them, hopefully, and we will get some of those questions and we can answer them after this segment. So feel free to do that. And uh, yeah, so here we go, right? Preseason stream schedule. Let's just start from the top. Of course, on the 7th, which was last, look at my calendar, Wednesday, we, had, we started off with a major matchup, the Sharks versus the Panthers. Of course, Panthers, dumpster, 3-0. Uh, Sharks only fielded Nuss from their uh, actual team, I believe. They had two uh, AAA subs. They had Sniff and Edwin that come through. And, you know, I put this on there because, like I said, the, the Sharks is an interesting roster. Uh, Slice and Nuss, many people are high on, and I would agree. I think they're two really good, you know, mid-to-top-tier major players. 
Uh, but the bottom part of that roster is actually the question, as I, I said before, you know, where do you go with that? How do they perform, uh, particularly bringing in DTR? And so we put them on stream. We're like, okay, let's 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 give them a look, right? Let's see how they look versus the Panthers, who we had said universally seemed like they were going to be one of the top major teams. I'm still of that opinion. Uh, this game really helped solidify that opinion. I think Deluxe came out phenomenal. Gatman helping mesh that roster together. Insanity finally getting his limelight. I know he sat a lot last season, but definitely getting out there and impressing a lot of people. Kiro even coming through. Um, some great aerial coverage. He had some really insane plays. So it just wasn't even close. A close of series. And honestly, I don't think it told us really anything about the Sharks. It really just told us about the Panthers. I think for me, it said that the Panthers, yes, they're, they're a top-tier team. And if they're expected to dumpster team, they will. And in this scenario, what it told me was Nuss looks good, but he can't carry lower ranked players. Snip and Edwin, let's just not be rude and just say they, they couldn't keep up. And so it didn't tell me much about them other than the fact that if they ever have to sub up like that again, it might be trouble for them over the season. But I am concerned where you now go with the bottom part of this roster or if you guys think that Slice is just the key to this team. What do you guys think? What did you guys learn either from watching it or hearing about this matchup if you guys didn't get to tune in and catch it? I mean, it was pretty straightforward. Yeah. we all expected the panthers to dumpster them uh and i think kiro came in and played a few games and played really well and gat hasn't been really around a lot this preseason he was there for the stream match but um it's been uh insanity deluxe and kiro really running stuff and they've been doing really well too so i'm not surprised by that sharks i'm kind of interested to see i think I, I don't know. Nuss is good. He He's not going to carry a major team. He's just mm-hmm. not. Um, he, He's a solid major player. He can hang. He can do all the things that he did last season, but it's not going to be as convincing mm-hmm. as it was in double A. Well, does he need Slice then? I guess is the, the question, the follow-up to that, right? Do you need Slice to play for them, to, to, for them to win? Because let's say he doesn't. Hmm? 110 percent Yeah. Hmm. Slice has to be the answer because that was just Mm -hmm. that was pitiful. And I think that but that that brings up the final interesting point. It was the point we actually talked about last time, which is let's say Slice, even if he plays, let's say he plays, because because the the big question for a lot of people actually had for him, and when I got signed to the Sharks, is what all people told me was uh, his availability. As with many of the, the major players, the 2K players, their availability is always the question. A lot of them, you know, can't make time or work or do their own, you know, six mans, and those are more important and that kind of thing. It's actually uh, something that happened with the Flames, John Waite doing some Canadian six mans, and we had to wait for him on the crack tourney. So definitely some of these players, you know, have other things to do. Um, but let's say he even made, he makes the match, and it, they field him, Nuss, DTR, whatever, or him, Nuss, Grambo. And you do what we think you can do, which is you put someone like a wreck or someone like, you know, a John Wade and you shut down slice because it shouldn't be that hard. Like I said, I think that if you get a really another top tier major player one for one, they'll be about the same. So you shut him down or at least you tie him up. Right. So equivalency is there. Well, then you have to go down to Nuss and your third and Nuss. Yes, he can hang. But but what about your third? What do you think this team does when you shut down slice? Do you think Nuss then has to be that backbone? that he couldn't have been with the two triple A players? Or do you think this team has to have that step up from their third man who we have, as of yet have not gotten to see? Uh, Probably. I think Uh, it's going to be the the third man as well. Yeah. Yeah. You can have a weak link, especially in major. Um, Like you can get away with it in lower leagues, like having one or two really good players that kind of carry. Mm-hmm. Um, but like once you get into major, like you can't have a bad player because you're going to get exposed weekly, just over mm-hmm. and over again. They'll just attack that player and get him again and again and again. So gotta have a mm-hmm. good third man. Yeah, and I think it's. I think we actually. I I just experienced that personally. Um, we were playing in the crack tourney against the Cobras, who uh, actually are a really good team. Uh, I was sleeping on them a little bit. I didn't know much about them. They uh, they're a very good team. Uh, and they came out, and uh, we we couldn't field our real roster, as I told you guys before we started. Uh, Bob's internet was just gone. Uh, the, he had some thunderstorms in the area. Wreck, actually, you could hear the thunderstorms through his mic. They were so bad. I guess they live somewhat similar area. And, uh, yeah, same thing happened. It was We had to field our two two lower players with Wreck, and we just we just couldn't hang. And, they, again, they're a really good team. So I think that, for me, it's a little still concerning, and I think that we still have questions for the Sharks that they really need to answer going forward into the first few weeks of the regular season. Um, but moving on, right, to the, the second matchup of that night, that was a double-A matchup between the Vultures and the Falcons. 
This one was at 8 p.m. And it ends in a 3-0 domination by the Vultures. The Falcons did not keep up. You know, you had Skriki that night. It was like, I predict a uh, two sweeps, one for the Falcons, one for the Osprey. And he predicted it, but but the wrong way. So, uh, I mean, what do you guys think? This is obviously, once again, a double-A matchup. Vultures-Falcons. I think the Vultures impressed. Uh, we, we thought they'd be good. But we didn't quite think they'd be that good. Uh, they, they kept their same roster out there. The Falcons were swapping all the way around. But the Falcons, they have a negative 16 goal differential moving here into week two of the preseason. So they just don't look like they know what they're doing at the current moment. What would you guys take? Um, go ahead. Do you want to go? All right. Yeah, you go. Uh, from playing the Falcons, um, you said, did Skirky play that night? I didn't get to watch it. So. Uh, yes, I okay. think so. He was at least in chat, and I think he was playing, yeah. I think if Skirky's on the field, it's mediocre. I think the roster we played against in the crack tourney, um, inside take, we probably have a player with the worst mental I've ever seen in Rocket League. But besides the point, when we played the Falcons, they fielded bench, which was easily the Avalanche's carry last season. Mm-hmm. Um, Killer and Dynamo, yeah, no, kill, yeah, Dynamo, whatever. Um, and that roster is really good for the Falcons. And I think if they would have played that against the Vultures, they would have won. Why well, you got to do my boy on a mouse like that live and on on four K, dude? I mean, no, <laughs> mouse isn't. No, mouse is mental is insanely good. I don't see how he. Does yeah, that. no, he's a super nice guy. Obviously, one of our streamers. I'm I'm just messing with you. Though, if I keep doing that, we get down to the one. <laughs> just go ahead and narrow it down. But uh. Yeah, you know, it just it didn't look good from the Falcons. It really didn't. Um, I had more hope, I think, that for them. Remember, this was actually a replacement match. I had the uh, the Bandits on there. I forget who they were going to play at the time, but they they were like, nope, can't do it. I think it was actually Bandits Warriors. I think was the uh, the matchup I wanted to throw up there to give us a shot at the Warriors before they lose Irony and and cracked. And uh, mm-hmm. obviously, that didn't come through. But uh, I mean, you know, Max Klopp, what do you guys think? What do you what do you think of the either the, the surprise? Well, not really surprising, but. Surprising exactly how good the Vultures were or just how bad the Falcons were that night. I'm not surprised one bit at how good the Vultures are. Mm. I am concerned that they don't have a fourth currently, or do they? They still don't on the sheets, but yeah, there's I, so many teams over four that they'll end up having to get somebody. No, I, I know. But, it, it just concerns me but, but that again, all... It's, it's these... Entity and Hakuna Mobamba, so that's <laughs> probably why. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, no. But they have these three, and they're building good chemistry, and that's great. But at Mm -hmm. some point, you have to, something's going to come up. You're not going to be able to field that roster. You're going to have to play with somebody else. And I'm wondering if that situation occurs, are they going to be able to just slot right in or if they're going to really struggle? I think Kitsune is going to be the carry for that team. He's a solid, solid player. I had a really tough time playing against him in scrims. Um, Falcons, I think they are okay but they're not gelling. They're not on the same page. When we played them this week, they were kind of all over. So mm-hmm. I, I think once they gel a little bit more, they'll be okay, but they're not going to make playoffs. I think first team, first step for a team like that, and you know, Max, I want to ask your take, is you need to go ahead and cut your roster down, I think. You need to start now so that you can take a full week of preseason, which doesn't matter, and just go ahead and rotate through your four or rotate through your three or whatever you want to do but go ahead and get that roster to jail. I think they need to go ahead and cut it down because they need to decide who they want to play and just work on their strengths if they're struggling so much. What's your take, Max? Uh, yeah, I agree. Definitely cut down the roster right away. Like, Because then you can take this week with just that roster, and if you know something's wrong, then you can really identify where that problem's coming from. Mm-hmm. But on the topic of like Vultures-Falcons, I'll be honest, I gained zero information from watching that game. <laughs> like It was just, I had no idea what was going on. The Vultures were just like hitting open nets. The Falcons were like rule oneing with each other, like on the ceiling and stuff. Like, <laughs> what was going on? They were just no... supporting each other, Brokeback Mountain style, dude. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no information garnered for me that game. Vultures could be really good, but they could just be average and they just hit open nets because they were playing 1200s. Like that, mm-hmm. I got nothing from that game. Yeah. But well, at least so... they hit the open nets. Mm-hmm. I still will probably end up putting the Vultures back on stream, so hopefully we'll get to see a little bit more about them. Uh, you know, it's going to be a question for the Falcons. Again, guys, I, I explained this to the media team too. You know, the way you get on stream, be a good team. Or be a team that I think people will be interested in watching. So if you get a bunch of people from the community, they're like, we want to see this game and this game. As long as they didn't play the previous three weeks, then yeah, I'll probably throw it up there if you guys are interested because you guys are my audience. So let me know. 
what you're interested in. Uh, that said, so moving to the to the last one of that night. Of course, this is still Wednesday. It was the Owls versus the Osprey. Now I threw this one on there with the intention of Revy had uh, had gotten them them e muscles up full strength, looking like SpongeBob, you know, out there ready to go in AAA. He was like, "Yo, we are the best. We're ready to go. We're so good. We beat the Bulldogs. We did da da da." So I was like, "All right, here you go. Here's your shot, brother. Prove it." And so I put him on stream versus the Osprey. Osprey. You know, I didn't know much about him, but but it was more, I think people wanted to watch, at least in my mind, people wanted to watch the South's team. And they wanted to see both where are they, like in terms of really looking at them as a team, and also just, you know, wanting to see Revy and all the, you know, little bombast that this team does. Uh, and they actually came out and played a much closer series than I really thought would happen. Uh, and I will end up taking it 3-2, very close, uh, against these Osprey. And so my initial reaction is I did, of course, cast this night was this is a really good game. And this Alice team actually does look pretty good. Um, what I the reaction I had somewhat had later on when I was talking to some individuals and I don't know that I agree or not. I want to ask you guys take especially and then, of course, what you learned from this was uh, they said, well, it's just two mid, mid tier teams. This is what happens when you put two mid tier teams or two low tier teams against each other like they just are close and it looks maybe better than it is or this or that or the other. That was a take some people had given to me. And so I'm like, what do you guys think? Do you agree with that? Or do you think owls came out and impressed us and really surprised us? Like I had that initial feeling or, or what'd you guys learn from this matchup? <laughs> Don't all speak up at once. <laughs> I wanted to hear someone else's take first. So. No, Alice, I, can, now you get to go. I can you go. go. Right, I, can go. Right, I don't go. care. Um, I think it's two mid-tier teams, but I think Spacey did really, really well. Um, I was impressed with Bezo hanging in there. Um, I, I think he monkeys a little bit too much. Uh, he's a ranked warrior and just <laughs> sees ball and hits ball. Um, Revy, uh, he's improved. Uh, mm. I'll leave it at that. He's improved. Um, <laughs> Osprey, we're keeping up, but it was just a flip of the coin every single mm. game. It's just unfortunate that it was a sweep. It wasn't a sweep. Well, you mean reverse sweep. Reverse oh, yeah, sweep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. So while you two figure out if you want to speak or not, I will say I do remember that I was, I was, I was pissed after this matchup. I was not happy. And I was not happy because I'm like Osprey. And I said, I even said this on cast. I'm like, what on God's green earth did I just watch? It's like, you had it. And then you just were like, nah, you're mad. Slaying comes in and he's like, score? You have to do that now? What? And they were like, yeah, here you go, open net. Slaying, nah. And they're like, all right, all right, all right, that's fine here. Let me let me reset it, reset, you know, back Wii Sports. Let's go reset the, reset the putt. Nah. All right, Slaying. All right, look, look, eyes on me, Slaying. Hit it with some force into the net. Well, he got the force right, but it wasn't in the net. And I was just getting more and more mad. I'm like, what am I watching right now? You were such a, you, you looked good. I was, I had a whole thing of notes ready to go on how I was about to praise this Osprey team and be like, yo, this actually looks like a lot better team. And I'm excited for this team going forward. Da, 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 da. And then it was just like, nope, nope. Throw that one out, burn it, get it out of here. And I'm, I just, you know, I don't like to call the players out. I said that tonight, but I made a very, what I thought was funny, might've been an appropriate joke about slaying it that night. Cause I'm like, he threw the game like for me so so lsm max now coming to you on this one again i i think there is some argument to be made that it is two mid tier teams eh? but at the end of the day truly yeah yeah i know revy was hype and they won and congratulations to the owls but the osprey beat themselves more than anything else it felt like that night I also got no information. From the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why, why not this time? <laughs> I think, I don't know, man. I just, it's hot. It was difficult to watch. Like, obviously the throwing, but then it's just like, boom, 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 ping pong all game. Yeah. It's preseason. I think you got to see what these teams do in the regular season with a consistent game. And also it's like on stream too. Teams that haven't played a lot, they were probably First playing game. out of their shoes a little bit, all that stuff. So I got, I didn't get much from it, but hey, the the Owls won. <laughs> they did the thing. <laughs> they did they it. Did. So the <laughs> Owls won. They did the thing. Sam, what do you think? I mean, you're last up here. What do you think of the matchup? Yeah, I, I didn't get to watch, or I didn't see it. Uh, this is probably the first time I've heard anyone talk about it. Uh, so I'll, I'll just go my opinion on the team. I don't think either of these two teams will be 
even top eight. I think Owls at most might hit 10. And then Osprey, I mean, I've never heard of any of these three players. So get a more known, maybe better known AAA player who's good and maybe, but until then, I'm putting in bottom underneath at least the 12th spot. So get Justin. They'll be cracked. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, okay. Justin. Uh, right. Yeah, so that actually brings up an interesting topic. This is a little off topic, but I'll go ahead and talk about it. Uh, you know, we had given our predictions on who would explode, and we were talking about different teams. And uh, I had heard from some some people talking about AAA once again that uh, the geese are not looking so good, exactly what we thought. That um, obviously they dropped their first two games. Flip was very adamant it's because he's on vacation and he's not playing, but I don't think it looks good. If you're like, well, I'm not here, therefore the team's always going to lose. That once again is, brings you back to the argument of, your whole team needs to be good, not just if you can't field the one guy for whatever reason. And so we'll see how that team progresses, but it's not looking great, not looking hot. So that does wrap up the Wednesday night. So we'll go ahead into the uh, Friday night matches. Um, and then after these, we'll, we'll give our predictions, guys, for the for the next one. Obviously, tomorrow's matchups and on stream and then uh, Fridays. And then, of course, you guys, any questions you got, we'll answer. And then we'll probably be out of here. But, um, yeah, so... We had the Hornets versus the Pandas, the first Maverick matchup actually come on uh, to start us off Friday night. Uh, the, it was a close, close one, and the Pandas ended up taking it three to two. Um, you know, I was helping host it that night, but I was not uh, present for that game. I actually was out at the time. Um, so what did you guys think? What did you learn from this matchup? Anything in particular that, that really stood out to you? I didn't see the game. But looking at the Pandas roster, if Stevie was playing, that's why they won. <laughs> I was at work. I didn't see the game. I didn't watch the VOD, honestly. So all three of these games, it's going to be on looking at rosters for me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is personally, I think, another one where we go back to the Hornets more lost. Um then the pandas won. Yeah, because I was I was watching this actually because this was really funny. I was hanging out with a, a buddy of mine in the league, coworker, and uh, he uh he put all his points. I think he had like twenty something k into the Hornets, so he was like really into the match. And I just I went to eat dinner and came back, and he was just screaming. And I was like, "Why?" And he was like, "What well, Hornets lost?" And I was like, "Oh." So I don't know. We'll have to see more later on, but. I don't. I do. I won't take the uh, pandas out of being a bad or good team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I, I, so I actually did tune in a little bit because uh, I want to. You know, I always try to tune into the streams if at all possible because I want to make sure quality control that kind of stuff help you guys out if anything comes up. And uh, I, I agree, it was going the distance, but it was going the distance more because one team was like they had a good game and the other team didn't, and then we would swap and then we would do the same thing. And neither team looked like they were quite. Um, solid i guess is the best way to put it like like they put forth their best foot every game and, and just either got beat on an individual level or beat beat uh, the other team because of they were doing their best or whatever uh, i do think it, it but but i think it, it sort of exemplified what preseason was all about uh which is why i liked it which is just figuring your rosters out figuring out what you like what you don't like how you play together and learning to play together as a team and i think both teams did that well and that's why i liked this matchup yeah people were making mistakes all over the field didn't matter i didn't care i think the both teams did what they needed to do in a preseason matchup they knew how they wanted to approach it they knew what they wanted to try out and what they wanted to do and what they wanted to learn as a team and i think it really set both teams up to look good going forward in the regular season i think that both of these teams will still be good that's why i love that i had them on and i definitely think we'll be looking forward to more from them from math because i just think it's they just knew it was preseason. They're just like, okay, sure, whatever. Um, they, they had no sweat. They just went on stream to do their thing. So to me, it was one of the better preseason matchups we've actually had so far. Uh, the matchup that comes after is the A matchup. It will be the Embers versus the Miners. Uh, the Embers end up losing it in another 2-3 game. The, the distance, the, the, the games that night went the distance. So they end up losing in another 2-3. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, so I, I did tune into this one, but... I, again, I'm not sure what I quite learned from it, uh, particularly now, of course, that the Embers have made a few roster moves. But still, you know, I think the biggest thing I learned from it was that the Embers didn't look too, as hot as I think we, you know, pun intended, as, as hot mm -hmm. as maybe we, we had, had talked about them in the beginning. Now, though, with the different roster, that could certainly change. But I think that the Miners came out just looking like a better mid-tier team and the Embers didn't quite keep up. I mean, what do you guys think? We'll start with you, Klopp. Uh, 
I didn't watch this game either, but I'm looking at the rosters now, and I think the Embers have a significantly better roster mm-hmm. than... We, we got to remember, they did change this roster up. So I, like I, that, I know that. it. I know it. Um, but Miners, Kofro is good. Row Paperclip is okay for A. No disrespect, Paperclip. He's my captain my first season here, so I, I don't want to be too disrespectful, but uh, he's all right. Sushi, I don't know much about, and Jonah, I don't know much about. So, um, I think Embers are going to be a better team once they figure out their system and how they play, and I think they'll make playoffs for sure, but no guarantees. You never know. You could slump mm-hmm. like us last season and then just throw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, LSM, what do you think? What, what, what's your take on these? So one, the Embers had serve at this point. This was actually four days after the trade happened. Oh really? Um, yes. So funny story. I was in the call with Trot. We were in our LPC gen chat, just bumping, and Scraps joins. Scraps tells Trot, "I'm subbing for your Embers roster," and then leaves. So we were like, "Oh, it's gonna be Scraps, um, serve in like one of the subs because from what I understand, both Fort and, um." Epic Eagle are like rotating subs mm-hmm. and the roster is really just built around serving Koala. Well, I look on stream and so does Trot and we see Scraps, Epic Eagle and Fort. So that's that's the problem. They didn't have Koala, they didn't have Serve. Um Serve did come in the last game. They lost. That could mean something that could mean hey, he can't play unwarmed, but all in all, it wasn't the Embers that lost. It was really whatever they, they, they didn't there, have yeah. anyone. Yeah, they had scraps out there for all people. Like, I, I'm not surprised. So, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really say anything about him just because of that. Yeah, I remember you guys telling me that he was going to sub. I told the casters who then brought uh, we brought it up on desk. Actually, We're like, oh yeah, well, how do you think the subs can impact? And there was no sub, and I was sitting there like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, what was I informed of? Mm. So whatever. But Max, what is your take? What do you take? What do you think of this this matchup? These these two teams. I think the Embers will be a significantly better team than the Miners. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, I didn't know exactly what happened there, but I knew that Koala didn't play. But also, like, so if Serb goes in in the last game, if you are a ma- major level player, I don't care who you're playing with. Like, you can't lose an A in game. You, 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 or you can't lose a game in A. You can't. Um, mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I then, yeah. don't know if that's the best move. May, maybe it's like a bench war on moral support. Like, Surf gets really hype, motivates the team. Maybe that's the sub idea there. But uh, anything other than that, I don't get if you lose a game in A, like if you're made at. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I definitely think that this version of the Embers roster will be much better to look at. And hopefully, we'll get to get them back on stream and, and get to take a look, right? And get to see what, the, uh, what they bring forward. Uh, if Surf is as highly touted as we'd been told or we'd discussed so uh the next matchup however was the final matchup of that night and it was the trojans versus the tundra now i definitely was here for this one uh once again i was doing the desk for these back two i just was getting snow cones the first one uh and i didn't want to do that on mobile because i didn't have my earbuds so um yeah this one actually uh said a lot and was very confusing um because i thought that the uh trojans we're going to be like, you know, big poggin, right? They were they were on track to make it to another playoffs and maybe even take it again in AAA. And then they come out here, and it looked rough against the Tundra, who end up winning 3-1, to one, the Tundra do. And uh, that really surprised me. The Tundra were not in my radar, uh, particularly just with all the stuff that was going on within that org and stuff. And I'm sitting there like, okay, whatever. They're, they're, they're Mar Coffee hijinks. Yeah, Mar, he was a major player, whatever. Coffee, he's okay. You know, so you, so you come in and you're like, okay, well, what what are we looking at here? And then the, and I'm like, okay, well, Trojans, they got two former four champs and they're looking really good, and da, da 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 and you got Mox and everything, and Peace Shooter highly touted, and they didn't look good. Um, and now again, this harkens back to you had Peace Shooter in there and some others, and I'm like, they're very explicit ways to break down a team like that, particularly when they're so well known that other people would know how to break them down. But I mean, what is your guys' take on this AAA matchup? didn't see it so i don't know to be honest <laughs> uh from rosters i mean i think i think the tundra should be good just because mar played good in um 
in major the like one or two games he played last season uh on the other side the trojans uh if we talked about it last time i think sh- should be able to win it all again because of that cream and mux duo that is they're really really good together i'm in the same boat with you um i think the trojans should make a deep run and i think tundra should be a good team too they should make playoffs and they could possibly make a run um if coffee and hijinks can work around mar and keep up with him and his pace so it'll be interesting Mm -hmm. to see how they pan out this season i agree Mm -hmm. and you gotta remember uh mux didn't play this match actually he wasn't he or no he did play i think what ended up happening this was sort of interesting because they were another team that had like told me a roster that was gonna be on stream and it was just entirely different if i remember correctly it was uh cream didn't play and it was Jaden mux and pea shooter but Mox was at his friend's house who was acting like an idiot. So they weren't in comms. According to his, his words, he said he's acting like an idiot. So they, he, they weren't in comms. And he went to his friend's house for whatever reason. And he was playing on a setup that he has a better computer, but he has a trash tier monitor. So he said the input delay was insane. It, it wasn't a one uh, MS monitor. So, which is what Mox plays on typically. So he's like, I just didn't, it did, it was not responding to me when I thought it would. And he's like, that was killing me that he's got a better computer, but a worse monitor. So it just didn't matter. Da, 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 da. And so, yeah, these might all be excuses, but I do know that they didn't play cream and Mox allegedly had all these issues. So, you know, more than it being like Trojans just look worse than we thought. Maybe it was just a, hardware thing and that that actually I, I understand that you know bobcats last season we had the same thing uh obviously zero chopped off half his finger tip of his finger uh cxl's controller didn't work and my computer just is still garbage to this day so like i definitely understand tech issues and so if that was the thing that actually makes a lot more sense as to why this matchup was closer than we had probably predicted going into it um that said so what so other than just they look like a good team on the tundra i mean did it elucidate anything for you in terms of this Tundra team, do they play well together? What kind of fourth do you guys think they need to really bring this roster together? Do you think they just need a hype guy or a really skilled guy to keep up with Mar? What do you think this team should be looking for as their fourth in AAA? Um, if you can find a super mechanical guy um, with a little bit of pace, I think that'll fill out that roster a little bit more. Um, I'm looking at the free agents right now. Just take Justin off the, no. off the almost get ready to I, explode I mean, geese. I mean, <laughs> you could, but no, no, it's enough. It, he's enough headache as it is. Let the geese handle that. You, don't you could take, him. you know, it's actually kind of interesting. If you wanted to do that, I could see three players that are on teams that I would say, go ahead and pull that trigger. You could argue Justin, although that would be, interesting and particularly with him and mar i don't know how they would vibe you could say nanites who i actually think would be good because he would like playing with mar who should technically play at a major level uh so if you pulled him off the bulldogs you'd have that that option um you could bring edwin back right and you could trade for him again as i said they looked interesting off the dolphins roster they are negative 11 goal difference right now so that roster needs some changes because they clearly aren't vibing right now um for a lot of reasons that I could probably tell, but you know, whatever they, they just don't look good. Uh, particularly if snip's going to be your top guy. So I think that, you know, there, there are players you could take and pull like to, to help elevate this roster to a new level. But, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that four slot. I mean, Max, LSM, anything you guys think they should do or things that this told you about them in particular, other than that they'll be okay. I said, get a cheerleader. Have some fun. Just go crazy. <laughs> My role in the Bobcats, big thing. cheerleader. <laughs> uh, I, I personally think that uh, they just need... I think I really, they just need someone who can vibe well with Mar. Because I think, I think if Mar has someone he can work well with on the roster and can kind of be like his duo, I really think that Mar should be able to, in AAA, be able to pretty much get his team far mm. he's a really good player for what i've seen yeah and uh i see in chat no ice cream that, yeah goal differential 
doesn't 100% matter in preseason, but I typically mean, I think it matters if you're 10+. plus. Because think about what that means. Let's say you get beat in a 3-0, but you get beat 1-0 every time. That's only three goals. And this is only week one week in, right? So you'd be, you'd be a negative six. Let's say you lost every game, but you lost them by one. If you're losing by more than 10, you have not been doing so hot in whatever matches you uh, have done. It means you lost probably both of them and by a pretty decent amount, right? Like you definitely didn't lose by one goal every game. So I just don't think, yeah, and it also is a little bit of a bias in the sense that the Dolphins, the two players that subbed to major would be the ones to me that needed to do really well in that Dolphins team. And um, it, I mean, there's no other way to put it than it looked bad. They They did not look good on stream they really just didn't and again i know they were in a major lobby against one of the best teams in major but that doesn't have any excuse for people like snip missing every other ball it just doesn't so that's sort of where i go at with that that's how i would answer your question so uh right before we get to the rest of the questions though just going through real quick guys i'm uh you know the the matchups for that are going to come out tomorrow and then of course on uh friday the matches for first week of regular season are up, and by probably either tonight or tomorrow, I will go ahead and put up week two of the regular season's matches up, uh, as once again recommended to me. We won't have like records and be able to decide until about probably week three or four, and by that point, we should have more better records and things that people are interested in or tell me they want to watch, that kind of thing. So I just get to choose, really, for week two here. Um, but so we have, first off, starting us off tomorrow are going to be the Bulldogs and the Entropy. Um, now, I slotted this one on there because Bulldogs, ha we, you know, we talked about them last time, have potential to be good. They haven't really fulfilled that potential as of yet. So what do you guys think? What do you think we'll learn from this one? Do you think we'll get to see more from the Entropy, or do you think it'll answer our questions on the Bulldogs? I think it'll be really telling of how the Bulldogs season is going to go because I think the Entropy are a really solid team. Um, if they come out and make a statement, uh, it'll, I think that they'll make a late run, but if not, I don't know. They could just be uh, a hyped up team that doesn't work. There's, you get three good players on a team and sometimes it just doesn't work. So I think mm -hmm. it'll, it'll actually tell us a lot. Yeah. The, the entropy are a team I'm excited for just because, uh, I really enjoy all all four players on that roster: Gibby, Blind, um, Yuki, and then Skies. I believe is their fourth, and I think that's a roster with a lot of potential as long as they don't have, like, if they're all playing. I know that there might be a chance some of them don't play as much, and then that might be where they fall apart. But I think they should be able to beat the Bulldogs. Um, I don't think the Bulldogs are gonna do that good. So I think we'll just have to see. I agree. I think it will be really showing for the Bulldogs. Although I think the Bulldogs are actually going to be a good team. I know I kind of railed them last time on the podcast for <laughs> losing <laughs> to the Owls so bad. But I think what happened there probably was they had a screw and maybe forgot about it, got on late. And the Owls definitely have a unique play style, and it might have caught them off guard. So if they play against another good team like the Entropy, that probably play more traditionally stuff that makes sense um i think they'll be all warmed up and i think the bulldogs are gonna look really good and end up being a good team i just think they maybe got got off caught off guard by the owls mm -hmm. i i still have hope for the bulldogs uh Stites had actually approached me uh and asked if i wanted to help give some coaching advice to this team uh which i said i would do i'm not sure if that's actually gonna end up coming through or not but um it's i i i like the bulldogs i still think they have potential uh, my only concern is that I think that there are two types of teams, especially in AAA. There's the team that uh, loses and just uh, accepts it and goes, yep, we got stuff to work on and knows what they need to do. And they start working on stuff and they get better. And then there's the type of team who loses and then goes, well, we're just having an off night. Or we just weren't vibing or we just weren't doing da 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 da, -da but always has a reason for why they lost, but that reason never gets fixed. Um, I'm curious to see what kind of team the Bulldogs will be. As I said, they haven't had the best start to preseason. It doesn't matter. It's just preseason. So uh, I think it will elucidate a lot for us. But I also really like the fact that the entropy, because, you know, they just pick up Yuki Lo Lo Lioko, is it or is it Loco? It's supposed to be Loco or Lioko, whatever. Um, either way, they pick. They just pick him up. So we'll get to see new look, full roster, entropy, right? That's not to be confused with uh, Castor Yuki. He's on the Pioneers, I believe. Uh, one many of you would know. 
Yuki Loco uh, was on the Lions last season. He was like yeah. their hard sub. I don't even know if he ever touched the field. Yeah. So, but but it'll answer a lot of questions for us, right? How does their final roster look, particularly if you have hope for them, as you said, you know? So, uh, I actually think this should be a really good matchup. It will answer a lot of questions on both teams and really see how they want to uh, kind of go forward uh, as, as organizations and what they want to do here is, is this is the final week to figure a lot of that out. Going into the regular season next week, it all matters. Um, so, so exciting one to watch. Uh, you casters that night are still sort of in flux. I know we have Max. You said you could come through tomorrow, right? You, you are coming through for Titan tomorrow, right? You, you, yeah, you know, cast, yeah. So, I think I'm actually gonna have Gala cast with you, except for the first one, which might be Caramel. We're gonna have to figure that out. We'll figure that out. I promise you'll get your casters somewhere in here. But, uh, the, the next match of t- uh, tomorrow, and so, so you get to both you know, put some predictions out here and then I get to roast you tomorrow on the desk if you're right or not, <laughs> you know, saying what you think. So, so keep that in mind, Mr. Max. But, uh, so the next one's going to be an indie matchup between the Centurions and the Toucans. Now, this one is going to be interesting in a lot of ways. I know you have, you have our main man Bard up on the Centurions. Uh, he, he's like, oh, I'm bad. I'm not going to play to the, the, but he's the highest on their, their team. I'm curious to see where they go. I also want to see the Toucans because they were, just an incredible team last season. Uh, and I want to see, do they continue that dominance? Many of their players did not return, but you know, to, at least to the Toucans team, they went to higher leagues or whatever. So so they, I think it'll be a good question, right? Do the Toucans maintain that dominance that they had last season? How do this new look Centurions? What do you guys expect to learn from this match? Uh, I'm excited to see Bard play. I think Bard can carry that team. I'm going to be, uh, I don't care what Bard says. He's goaded. Uh, so I think that he'll come out and he'll play really well. Mm-hmm. I don't know too much about the two cans, so I'm just going to hype up Bard. Bard <laughs> is the goat. Give me Centurions as well. Um, I don't really know too much about the players in the Centurions, but I do know I'm not the biggest fan of uh, some of these players in the two cans. Um mm-hmm. So, yeah, Centurions all the way. 3 1. 3 1. <laughs> all right. Yeah, awesome. I mean, the, the Centurions, all the players sounding pretty familiar. Of course, Bard being the most well known name. But on top of that, I've heard of, um, I've heard of Sl- Sleeper Kevin sounds familiar, Doc and Juventum. They all th- three sound very familiar. On the two cans, I mean, sort of with Max, I don't like some of these names. Um, as players or as most individuals? Of these, most of these are drafts, draftees, but uh, the big one sticking out to me is Dan. I had a huge issue with him last season um, on the Thrasher's roster. He's, and that was, we had some problems with him, had to get rid of him. And the Thrasher's just magically after that did a lot better, so... Who knows? Um, we'll yeah, have to see. Yeah, uh, we'll have to see what roster the two cans field. But uh, I really, I really think the Centurions are going to be the better ones here. Yeah, yeah. And the, the the curious question actually is, does Bard play? Uh, I remember announcing that he was. I was going to put him on stream, and then he's like, "Well, I'm on vacation, you know, because he's going to a cousin's wedding, I think, and so he's got some other stuff going on. So does he play? If he does, because I think he said he can make this one, but let's say he can't, right? Let's say he doesn't play. Do we still think the Centurions take this one, or do you think the two cans have a much better shot of maybe taking this match up? I still got Centurions. <laughs> well, so so what is your issue with the two? You don't have to get specific, but is it like a uh, like you don't like the players, or you don't think they have a lot of talent currently on the team? Like which which direction is it? Like you don't like them as for like toxicity and stuff, or you just don't think they have talent? You don't have to be specific if you don't want to. I just mean like. You know, I'll get specific. Um, <laughs> same thing with Dan last season. I was on the Raptors, and that org was just like, you no, know, that was a that was a crap show. But then this guy, the striker, mm-hmm. um, he was in Mav last season. Uh, he got like super toxic to his to his players on his Mav team, and would just like scream at them after games, and like his teammates would try and give him help, and then he would just start yelling and yelling at them. I heard all these things, and just not the greatest player. Like, he's got, like, 5,600 hours and hit 1,200 for the first time. Uh, so, yeah, not the biggest fan of the striker, both personally and as a player. I think if he's in the lineup, they're getting specked. Uh, well, yeah, uh... So I have to be careful what I say here because uh, the striker, aka V2 Black Magic, is now a caster. 
Uh, I'm going to have him cast with me a little bit. I'm going to test him out see what he does. See, oh. see if he, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know <laughs> I, I interviewed him and I asked him actually about that allegation and he denies it. Uh, so I will keep an eye on him and I, I firmly believe in being fair to everybody and giving them a shot. Um, so we will see how that goes, but I, I, I agree with you. I, I still like the Centurions, even when the season started, I thought they would be a good team. Um, Bard actually not not being there will be interesting for me. Uh, I do remember vaguely like casting him one time last season, um, but but I definitely think that their roster. I think a lot of questions will be answered tomorrow on how we should really interpret the Centurions and where they're going as a team, and and also f you know if you if you guys talk about well, if you put so many toxic egos together, elements together, how do they vibe? Do they vibe? Do the two cans explode? All that really will will get to be answered, and I think stream schedule more than anything else really brings that out, right? Because you're at an audience now so now it really matters in terms of for some of these players they're like you made me get embarrassed you know let's let's say they missed every ball but they, but they're the kind of player that goes you embarrassed me on stream because you guys sucked and then we lost or whatever teams almost always fall apart so this is the time to do it so this will be interesting but moving to the last matchup for tomorrow it is going to be the bandits versus the falcons so you do have the falcons back on here uh because because you know, they, they were already scheduled to be here. And then, of course, they filled the back one. So that's why they're on here twice. And uh, first look we get to see of the Bandits. Uh, and they had just changed their whole whole team thing up here. Um, you know, what do you guys think? You, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, you, you already gave your feelings on the Bandits and the Falcons. This is two lower teams and probably our, our collective opinion. Is this going to show anything maybe different for you guys? Or what do you think for these two teams? I am interested because I saw Revy in here earlier. Apparently, Cracked is the captain of Bandits now. So I'm very curious to see the lineup that he kind of rolls with. He has a lot of players that he needs to kind of figure out who he wants to keep and who he wants to drop. And maybe it's not necessarily up to him, but he'll have some say since he's the captain. Um, so I'm more curious to see how the bandits play out than how the Falcons play out. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good reset point for both teams. Obviously with the trade, the bandits now crack being the captain kind of get to get a fresh restart. And then the Falcons the last time on stream was, uh, was a mishap. So hit the reset button, get to go again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that with the bandits, it's, uh, uh, we talked about him earlier. It's rough. Like, I think Crax, is, he's going to be a starter because he's captain. So I don't think he's the kind of person who lay himself out. Um, And I think he has no ones to choose from. Like, Jalen, I've heard is decent. But again, like, all the other ones I know mentor. I don't think he's double A. Um, don't know much about Jayu, but I'm not too optimistic. And Beachy and Tibbles, I'm just, I'm not optimistic with this roster. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to see, right? So, so once again, that'll be tomorrow. Last night, uh, last match of the night, we'll get a lot of questions answered. Uh, I want to go through really quick, uh, guys. So, so go ahead and ask your questions in chat now, so that we can answer a few of them because I really like to do that. I like to get you guys community involved. That's the best part of these lives. But we will have to end up wrap, uh, wrapping up soon. I know we all got some stuff to do. So, really quick though, I'm going to go to each of you individually, and just for the last three matchups, which are going to be the Cobras versus the Whitecaps, this is going to be on Friday. Uh, Cardinals versus Tempest, and the Yellow Jackets versus Galaxy. Just give me your scoreline. Who wins? Uh, you don't have to give me. You can give me like three one, or you don't have to. Just tell me which team wins. Uh, uh, I'll go through and start Cobras win against the Whitecaps as long as they field the roster. The, uh, we actually had some difficulty with them in the crack tournament. Uh, they changed the time four or five times before I was like, dude, stop. Like we're, we've set a time now to do the time. And then they, they went to management over it and they're like, no, 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 no. You have to reschedule again. And we're like, no, we're not. They end up winning though. They're a good team. They just need to field their team. If they field it, Cobras win uh, Cardinals versus Tempest. I have to give it to the Tempest on this one, uh, though I didn't necessarily agree with some of their roster moves. I think this should be a decent one, um, I'm, but I'm still not like 100% on that matchup. I think it's really a toss up, but I do think that the actually, you know what? No, I'm actually going to go the other way. I think the, the Cardinals should come out and do better. I think that I forgot they changed some of this around. I think Disby's good, but I think that you're going to look at the Cardinals to win that. And finally, I think the mm, Yellow Jackets versus Galaxy. This one, let me pull these rosters up. This is this is going to be interesting. Yellow Jackets, Risu, like a boss, and Chuck. Galaxy are uh, artillery, Muskrat. Our I think Galaxy take it. I think Galaxy take it in a close one, but I still think Galaxy take it. Klopp, let's start with you. What do you think? Tell me who um, wins go. All right, 
uh, Cobras Whitecaps, I think Cobras are a better all around team. Uh, Cardinals and Tempest. Tempest are going to win because uh, Entity is okay, but not great. Uh, so I don't think Cardinals are going to pull it out. Uh, then I agree with you on Galaxy as well. Max, you're next. Let's go. What do you think? Uh, give me Cobras. Uh, three one. Tempest in a sweep, and then give me Galaxy in a close one. Game five OT. I should have stayed with the Tempest. Damn. All right, LSM. You're up. Well, you're up last. What do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna go Cobras. Take White Caps. Well, I'd say three one. Um, Tempest three zero. Cardinals. Cardinals. No no chance at all. Um. And then Galaxy beat Yellow Jackets, uh, I'd say, in a game five. All right. All right. So we'll get to these community questions, and then we'll be out of here. So I see you guys in chat. I'm looking at them. And the first one that came through was, who's getting to the finals for AAA? <laughs> it's a long season is the, the short answer to that one. Uh, in the current moment, though, guys, what is your opinion? If you could pick one team, you're like, this is definitely the team that if they're not getting to finals, they're at least getting to the championship game. Pop, once again, let's start with you. What do you think? I'm torn. I want. Uh, I still believe in the geese to put it together, um. But I'm torn between geese and bulldogs right now. That uh, mm. that's where I'm at. I know their their preseason numbers don't look good, but I think they'll figure it out. Max, what do you think? I thought I was gonna be the. Only, I thought I was gonna be the only one. I'm all geese. Justin's got me. <laughs> I'm all geese. <laughs> all right, Elsa, right, you got like you last up. Mine's Trojans just because with the geese, Tyrant's in college now. He's one of the top players on that roster, and he's just he's not active anymore. He's not in Discord or Rocket League anymore, so I think that roster won't be good. Hmm. All right, so I uh, I agree that I think the Trojans should uh, make it, though my actually surprising pick would be the uh, Bobcats. I do think the Bobcats will at least get the playoffs, if not get towards the end. I think that they impressed me first week of preseason a lot more than because I, I had a lot of questions about these guys getting, moving up from lower leagues i think they really did impress me holding their own as a team and they know how they like to play so uh i i think the geese are gonna explode i don't think they're they're gonna stay together so i, I can't vote the geese because i don't think they'll pull it through it's just gonna really depend on them and i do agree with the bulldogs if they let me coach them i think i think there's some things we could work on from an outside perspective that look really they that they just need to put together i think they could get it there they they need some outside assistance whether me or someone else they just need some outside assistance though to help them get there uh let's see what else we had asked uh i know there was the mean question of clap when was the last time you saved and then corrected to shave your head i think you already answered that though you said that was like at the beginning like, of the screen time i shaved it today just for skirky and then skirky doesn't even show up and say hi so i'm a little hurt but that's okay uh <laughs> All right, the next one that came through was uh, Raptors. What do you need to fix? Uh, I don't I don't know the Raptors. I'm not going to okay, lie. Hey, buddy. I, uh, whoever asked that's banned. <laughs> no <laughs> way. You're not, you're not questioning my team. Markle no. TH. No, you're not questioning my team, bro. I got the best Mav player. If you're in Mav, you're getting slapped silly by apple pie okay yeah, yeah, yeah you said you, tr you, you made a ridiculous trade to get I here a first so and a third he's gonna he's gonna slap all the man he you better hope he does <laughs> Yo. expensive trade uh all right so the next thing that came there wasn't a question but it's gala going don't sleep on the tigers uh i don't think we're sleeping on the tigers everybody said they should be pretty good last time like uh, they still no. look good they have a plus nine <laughs> differential they look good we'll get to them when we get to them we just we didn't talk about them today uh quick predictions for all leagues that hmm do we want to do that or do we want uh, to win? like who's winning i'd say i say we literally just speed run it then but one dude, team one team yeah. per yeah let's do one team per all right lsm you start us off start us with mav who's winning hold up hold up mav uh, these, are, these are just just we're gonna title this if, if we Rock if we upload divide title this way too early predictions okay. redirect style here we uh, go guys we'll I'm see if we're right I'm just gonna say whoever comes to my head first. All right, Mav Raptors, um, Indy <laughs> Thrashers, uh, A Goals, Double A hopefully Pythons, um, Triple A Trojans, Major. I'm gonna go with the Bulls. Okay, I can't do that that fast. So let's just Max. What, do you think? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Mav Captains, Indy. Um, give me. Uh, sockeyes. A. Leopards. Double A. 
Jaguars, AAA, Geese, Major, Panthers. All right. What do you think, Clout? All right. Um, so, Mav, I'm going to say the Mages repeat. I'll pull a bold one there. Uh, I think an Indy. Uh, I'll go. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I just Pass. don't know. I'm not, good. I'm, not, I'm not caught up on them at all. A. Uh, I think it's going to be the Eskimos or the Embers. Double right A. Here. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, double A. I think. Pythons have a really good shot at it. I think there are a couple teams that can compete, but Pythons are a very good team. LSM is a very good player. I hate to admit it, but he is. Um, Triple A. I just said geese or bulldogs, so I'll go with that. And then major, I think it's going to be the Panthers. All right, none of y'all love my pirates. I hate it. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Uh, okay. I. Oh my god. All right. So I'm going to actually go with the piranhas for Mav. Uh, you guys, you guys seem to be sleeping on the plus twenty one gold differential piranhas. I'm gonna. I have some faith in the boys, so I'm gonna go with the piranhas for indie. Uh, I think, I I I want to agree with you, uh, all, but I think I'm gonna actually have to go with the beavers. I think they're looking pretty spicy, pretty nice. We'll get to know though, because they will be on stream week one of regular season. I think so. I'm gonna have to go with the beavers uh, for single A. I'm gonna say this, this is a good question, but I think the Eskimos too. I think you guys are right. I think they just look too strong right now. Uh, double A. This is kind of difficult. Uh, I actually think the Vultures. I, I think the Vultures will go through in double A and win it, at least in their current form. Uh, triple A, <laughs> once again, I think Bulldogs, uh, if they can figure out their issues. Otherwise, I still want to go with the Trojans. And finally, for Major, uh um see i really want to say pirates because i think i've built a really good roster uh with what we've got uh rex really good him and bob together are incredible um but i think if if we're not championship we're at least playoff team though i'll leave that for if we can keep winning uh that said i have to agree with you i think right now the, the panthers still my number one still looking strong but the flames are doing okay but again I, when i played the flames i think panthers beat that team i certainly do because we did we beat them with their actual roster. So, um, yeah, I think the Panthers, I agree with you guys on that. So those are our way, way, way too early predictions, preseason style. We'll do another round of predictions about halfway through, but uh, maybe maybe more than one. We'll see. All right, we're, we're getting ready to wrap up here. I know we've done a lot. We'll, do, we'll, we'll take one more question as I look through here. And the last question that we really even have from Chase on is, of course, your opinion on the Mustangs. Uh, now I you know I was pleasantly surprised that they came out and won. I, I didn't think they would be much, honestly. When we talked about them, I know we had talked about them before. I thought they'd be kind of. Eh. Uh, they did come out and win three other first game. I'm pretty sure though. And I'm trying to find the roster. Here you go. So it's I Trash, Dick, Zap, and Climax. They have a plus twenty four goal difference right now. They are popping. I think they're doing pretty good. I have heard mixed reviews on them. They might be doing good right now, but I know that they're beatable. They have a 3.75 stars on Goodreads. Okay, God. <laughs> they're, they're definitely a beatable team. Mm -hmm. The reason they have their goal differential is because of my team. All right. We, we had, no, listen, listen, listen. We had this amazing game one where it was tied 2 2, goes to a four minute overtime, and then we lost. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that person I mentioned earlier with the horrible mental decided he wanted to stop calming and not play the game. So we ended up 2v3 the next two games, me and Reflex, and we ended up losing one of those games 11-0. So, yes, I think they're all right, but they're definitely beatable considering we went into that OT game, and we probably would have had more if it was not for the fact that one of our players uh wanted to just quit and give up. Are you going to keep that player? That's the real question. Uh, probably not. A hundred percent. If we do, but, I'm going to be upset. But from now, all right, Max, what do you Most think? Things are irrelevant. Irrelevant. <laughs> any, irrelevant. any of the Bulls org, really? Just who yeah, cares? Irrelevant. Honestly, True. Bulls org only, only above flames. Okay, God, that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They're they look okay now, but again, I don't know much about them, and you guys heard from the experts on them. So. 
with that said, uh, I think we're going to wrap it there. We've, we've been going longer than I actually thought. Like, like hour 30. What? Do you have something you wanted to bring up, Max? Uh, bulls are irrelevant, except for the Bulls. <laughs> Wait, you, you actually like this Bulls roster? Uh, they're they're course okay. Of course, is there. I I think they're a, a decent team. Ryan's way too toxic for his own good, but I think they're a decent team. Uh, they're doing really well in the crack tourney. I know that they're they're winning right now in the, in the winners bracket for majors. So they're 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 getting on up there. They're definitely a decent team. Um, but I still think if this team plays the Panthers and if the Panthers learn the little secret of demo Ryan, uh, that'll be easier matchup than probably they would think. Um, yeah, because I think he'll get mad as I remember him getting mad in United Rogue. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, so I think that, uh, and, and I think he'll also get mad at the Cobras beat him in the crack tourney like tomorrow or whatever. Uh, yeah, so so unless you guys, anything else you guys wanted to bring up before we wrap here? I mean, or say even? I don't have anything. Okay. All right. All right. Well, guys, we've gone a little longer than I wanted or more than I expected than I wanted. I love to, to keep going on with these, but uh, thank you guys for tuning in for listening for watching whatever you guys are doing of course we will be back next week same time tuesday at about six o'clock for these to preview although that one will probably be pre-recorded unless we can't get a time together in which case we might come back live we're gonna have to see but i uh, thank you guys once again for tuning in for listening for watching we'll catch you guys next time